Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Thursday, August 17th, 2017 edition of VR News. Love days like today where there's lots of cool VR stuff to talk about. Let's start with this first story, game called Kiln. It's a platformer puzzle game from a studio in Amsterdam by the name of House of Secrets. They're known for a couple of titles, not VR titles, however. First one, Surge, released in 2015. Second was Apex, which they released earlier this year. Kiln expected to launch this fall, no exact date or price given. It's going to launch for both Gear VR and Rift. Now you can see in this trailer your avatar going over a landscape that looks slightly pixel-esque. It's not pixel art style, but you can see a little inspiration there. I kind of like the art style. The trailer ends with your avatar on a mountain looking at the sun in the distance. So oh, definitely pretty and has piqued my interest. Next story, Vertical Games. The devs behind Arizona Sunshine. They're going to be releasing their second VR game for the Rift and the Vive. And this game couldn't be any more different from the zombie headhunting fest that was Arizona Sunshine. You can see in this 42 second trailer, it shows the gameplay and yeah, definitely not FPS. Looks to be a real-time strategy game. There's a part in here where the table flips. I love that. You switch from your main game map into one of your crafting buildings is what it looks like. It appears to be a smithy. Trailer then shows your main castle expanding, maybe as a result of research or crafting advancement. No hint of a price, just again, a general release date for the fall. This next one, really interesting VR from a business point of view. The application is called Collab Hub. And what's interesting is that it caters more to business than gaming, but it could benefit devs directly the phases of a game where they're storyboarding, design stages, impromptu or scheduled remote conferences, really, really handy. Leads to an important note, it is early access. The collaboration feature that I was just talking about and that the name implies, not working quite yet. It's only single user at this stage of early access. It launched three days ago, August 14th, in my opinion, a really reasonable price of $6.99. Reasonable, I think, from a business point of view, because again, that's what this app appears to cater to. And I think the potential return on investment for businesses, you know, depending on what the project is, is huge for $6.99. You literally, if you've got multiple locations, need a handful of copies, and you've got a fantastic remote conferencing collaboration tool. Upload VR noting today that Sony has confirmed that their upcoming 5.0 firmware will in fact support streaming notification. It's also going to include 5.1 and 7.1 channel surround. There's a beta rolling out today with a full version likely coming in a couple of weeks. Next up, Stress Level Zero, company that launched Hover Junkers in April of last year. It was a game that gained a pretty quick following. It was multiplayer mayhem, pretty much literally right at launch. Unfortunately, that was kind of a curse at the same time. The timing of the game meant it was difficult to find people to play with just a few weeks after it launched. And by the summer, a lot of people were reporting pretty much no luck at all. Stress Level Zero today indicated they're going to update the game with a single player campaign to breathe some new life into the title, not just for original players, but to entice new players on board. The best part of that announcement, it's not going to be DLC that you pay for. It is free, which I think is a very classy move on Stress Level Zero's part, at least in my opinion. So anybody wanting to do that... Single player, if you've already got it, you're fine. If you don't, grab it at a Steam sale and you will have that same update. The trailer of the upcoming campaign shows story style missions. To me, looked a lot like Borderlands, those type of tasks, rewards to be able to upgrade your gear. If that is the case, that will be pretty freaking awesome. I've had some fantastic virtual reality experiences with my Sony PlayStation VR, my favorite by far, Resident Evil 7. Just loved that game so much. 
One of my complaints, not just in that game though, in general for non-seeded tracking, not the best. They've never claimed it was, but uh, now they're stating some hope for the future. According to Upload VR, Sony advertising for a research and development engineer who is going to quote, work on tracking systems and drivers for a VR related project. They don't name the project. However, they give a description for the position saying the person is gonna be responsible for development and integration of tools, APIs, and device drivers for virtual reality, including image processing and tracking using multiple sensor data. The interesting thing for Sony in their position is the HMD is more than capable of supporting 360. It was really the controllers, even the sensor array, yeah, it's an older style camera, won't require a lot of rejigging to make work 360. And I think the key to them was making the HMD as well as they did. Certainly would not have helped if they had to redesign the whole headset to accommodate new tracking. Can't wait to see what they come up with. We've covered a few stories concerning the Knuckles controller from HTC Vive. The last one just a couple of weeks ago involving the Revive Dev. Well, over the last several weeks, Climby developer Brian Lindenhoff has been testing the controllers in a variety of different virtual worlds, both Oculus Store titles and Steam VR titles. Writer for Upload VR, Ian Hamilton, asked Brian if he prefers them over the Oculus Touch or the Vive ones. Brian's response, definitely the knuckles. He did say they were initially a bit uncomfortable after hours of use, giving him what he calls a slight pinching sensation to his hand. However, he said he grew used to that pretty quickly, no longer feels the pinching. He also noted that a full charge provides about three to four hours of continuous use. He was also able to play both of the Echo games, of course, Lone and the multiplayer version. And I've got some clips up from that. There's different video footage. You can check out the full versions, but yeah, very intuitive looking. Honestly, I love both my Vive wands and my Oculus Touch controllers. Probably I would give the nod to the touch controllers for comfort, that sort of thing, but there are examples where the Vive controllers for me work better. Having the big club hands, what I notice with the touch controllers is I can often feel the portion that rounds the front palm of your hand and it's noticeable and it kind of detracts a little bit when I'm doing stuff like wielding swords, daggers, when any, if it's a pole, staff, dagger, that type of thing. Whereas with the Vive wand, it feels a little bit more natural. So definitely curious how these Knuckles controllers are gonna feel. And based on that feedback, even more excited. Well guys, that's it for today's edition, the Thursday edition. You guys know what day it is tomorrow, Gaming Friday, which is freaking awesome. Speaking of games, should have a game up later tonight. It has been filmed, just some quick editing for Killing Floor Incursion. Man, did I have a blast with that title. So look for that. Guys, as always, cheers.